I'm just going to grab a normal piece of maple here. Nothing fancy about it because I'm going to paint it. Six inch, about five inches long, six inches long. Blank here, I think it's five inches, five and a half. I'm just going to eyeball it in there again. Tell stock out of the way. Man, I'm on fire as far as lining this stuff up today. Let's see here. Just a, off, just a hair. Let's bring that out. And there we go. That should do it. Much better. All right. Tighten that down, and we're going to rough it down. Grab the roughing gouge again. Raise the tool rest a little bit there. Get it on center. Lock everything down. Spin the lathe. Turn your speed down because it's a new piece and you want to make sure it's not going to fly off the lathe. So here we go. Drop my tool rest a little bit. It's a large roughing gouge I'll be using. Now I'm going to turn up the speed a bit because it makes, makes it much easier to cut, rough cut a piece. You can tell by the sound of it. Need to bring down the, tel the tool rest a little bit more. Turn it up even a little higher. And tell the difference. See, if I was to turn it down, let's say we're at about 1300, you can tell the difference in the cut. You hear how choppy that is when you're doing that cut. If you can, if you can turn your lathe up, you know, about... I'm at 2400 right now. You'll hear the difference of the cut here. There's less resistance in doing the cut at a faster speed. We'll, just, we'll make this one with a really nice long fluted cup, more like a champagne shape. And a somewhat stubby stem on the bottom. And that should be good and round. So this is a little little big for what I want as far as thickness goes for a cup like that. So I'm just going to take down the, the thickness here a little bit. I'm going to move my tailstock in a little closer. best to do these kind of cuts, sizing cuts between centers before you put put it in the chuck, in the jaws of the chuck, because it gives you more support for cuts like this. So that should be good. You get rid of a lot of the waste wood this way.
So I need to create that tenon on the end of the piece here. Create that little dovetail. A little bit deeper there, there we go. And leave that, make sure that's flat or undercut right here. So the jaws sit nice and flat. Okay, so I'm going to grab my small parting tool and just clean that up. That is right here. Get that dovetail. There we go. Oh, yeah. Who's this? Run order, my God. Get rid of a lot of this waste wood. How are you? Uh, oh, do it. Hang all me. right. Um, who's talking on the phone? Could you please mute yourself? Appreciate it if you could. Thank you. So that's about the thickness I want. And while it's right here, I'm going to start shaping the cup in between centers. I'm going to decide how, how deep I want that cup to go. So I want a nice, deep, champagne-type cut. So I'm just going to bring the cup all the way down here. And I'm going to grab my spindle gouge here and start shaping it. It's going to be like tapered in at the top here. And as I come off the end here, I, I twist the, the tool a little bit there just to give it that nice little shape. I think it's still a little too thick, so I'm just going to take some of that away still. Most champagne glasses are kind of thin. A nice little inward taper here. Nice soft curve. Now we'll start on the end here. Do a twist as you come in for that curve. See the tip of my tool turning. And so now I'm just going to start removing wood here. Okay, so now I'm just going to stop here and I'm going to put it into the chuck. I don't want to get too far in case it needs to be trued up a little bit. And I've got the milk paint already mixed over on the side of the my workbench there. It's good to like mix it like an hour or two before you're going to use it. Let it ferment inside the, the water there and it makes it much better paint. The powder has a chance to dissolve more. 
But we'll talk about that when we get to that part of the, the project here. So we'll just set that into the chuck jaws there. Always make sure, too, that you're, you don't bottom out your piece. Your tenon's so long that it bottoms out inside the jaws. If you do that, you're not going to have the support you need. It won't rest on the shoulders. So that's very important. So let's see how well we... Okay, it's just a little bit out. That's all right. I left a little extra there to for truing up. Get a nice speed going here. There we go. And we're just going to come in this way. Do some cleanup cuts before you do the inside. Since you got all that extra support of the wood inside and we're going to come back this way and I do see a high spot right here so I need to whittle that down a little bit there and I'm just eyeballing the, what looks good See, this is a little fat for me, a little too. You want to make the, the flute of the cup a little thinner and not so bulky in the middle. And you guys hear me still all right? I just want to make sure my mic's working. I don't want my mic to... <laughs> battery to die if you guys let me know if my You're mic fine. dies okay if you can't hear me anymore let me know and i'll change the battery or change the pack out so so we're just going to start whittling this down a little bit more And I'm going to stop right here. So I'm going to start hollowing out the center there. I'm going to drill it out like I did the first. Did with the first goblet I made. So I will pull that. Get that. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Yeah. It's. What yeah. kind of finish can I use on the inside if I want to actually drink real champagne in it? Well, you need something that's going to harden into the into the fibers. Uh, uh, a diluted down shellac works well. It's like as it acts like a sanding sealer, but if you dilute it down, I, I use Zinzer's uh, sanding. Well, let me grab a can of it real quick, if I can. I don't know if I have any down here. It's called Zinzers. You can get it at the hardware store. It's a, in a can. But will that withstand real? Will that withstand real champagne? Oh yeah. As long as you just you know you let it cure, give it a few days to cure really well into the wood. And then you could put like a like Mahoney's walnut oil or something in there just on top of that. Well, if you're gonna use hot drinks okay. in it, don't don't use a wax finish on the inside. If you use a hot drink, though. Okay. It's, Thank it's gonna you. melt the wax. So. Isn't shellac alcohol based? And now with yes. alcohol liquid in there, isn't it just gonna <laughs> dissolve the finish? No. Denatured alcohol is different. 
what the denatured alcohol is just it's just what you mix in to dilute the shellac flakes it's the shellac that actually hardens into the wood the the alcohol will evaporate and just leave the shellac inside the wood it's like a carrier for the shellac but what what you know the denatured alcohol it, it's going to evaporate like within minutes of applying it and it's just going to leave the shellac inside the fibers of the wood behind which will harden in a few days and then what you want to do is go in there with a really fine sandpaper and sand it smooth and you should be good to go I've had that's what I've always used and I haven't had any leaks in the wood so yeah so you can go ahead and use you know for this I'm not gonna paint the inside like you said if you want to put fluid in there you don't want the milk paint inside the flute so I'm gonna turn my lathe down and I'm gonna drill this out And I can go pretty far. I'm going to mark my drill bit there just to make sure I don't go too far. So I'm just going to take the drill bit down about two and a quarter. Pretty much right up to this part right here should do it. Just this shy of the drill chuck there. I won't go any deeper than that because I'll use my tools to clean out the rest. And you got to remember, if you're using a Forstner bit like this, you got to count the point on the end. So here we go. I'm going to move this out of the way. And we'll start cleaning this out here. Always hold on to the drill chuck. Then back it out a little bit, make sure all those shavings are gone. I'm gonna turn down the speed a little bit. It's a little high for drilling. There we go. That's about 600. Yeah, that's, it's drilling better. I'm not getting any of the, that burn smell out of the center there. It's not squeaking so bad. Some people will put WD-40 on these drill bits when you're doing this in wood, and I do not recommend that because the WD-40 will get into the fibers of the wood. Especially if you're making a goblet, you do not want that in there. Any oil type lubrication is not that great. Okay, so we're almost to the the mark there on my drill bit. There we go. Boy, I need to oil this thing. All right, we're just going to slowly back it out, pulling the tailstock entirely out. There we go. And I'm going to crank this back and get the drill chuck out of there so I'm not, my elbow's not jumping into it. That hurts. Good morning. <laughs> morning, Louise. How are you? I'm good. Getting ready for, getting ready for a nice long weekend? <laughs> Drinking. Every day is the same. <laughs> so, hey, how's it? Hey, uh, I just got a call from Ron Oda. <laughs> Blast from the past. Anyway, he's cutting down on a jacaranda tree. There you go. I don't think he realized his microphone was on. 
So we need to clear out that end grain. And right now the fastest way to do that is use the spindle gouge again. And I'm going to grab that big one and just do some of those back cuts to thin out the cup here. It's a little high. Let's drop it down. There we go. And we're about 2,500 RPMs. And we just do some back cuts here. Using the wing of the tool towards the tip right in this area is the best spot to do this. Can you change the camera to the other side oh, view? I can. Let's see if I can get the right one here. There we go. That's a good one. Thank you for reminding me. And for the lip of the cup, I'm just going to put like a little bevel right here on the rim to start with instead of waiting until it's really thin to do it. It makes drinking the beverage a little easier when there's a it's not such a sharp edge on the on the end of the bowl here. It's good to have a heavy tool like this for this kind of deep work. I'm hitting the there. bottom there. Please give us another angle. Another angle? Your Let's arm is in the way. Oh, yes, please. Okay. We, 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 your okay, arm is on. in the way. How's that? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's just side view it. There we go. Is that out of the way? Your, How's that? Your wrong arm is not good. That's not good? Not good. No. The big one is good. Just the little one. Oh, well, there's not much I could do for that. I mean, I could do that one. But then you're going to be... You'll have to look at the back of me. <laughs> it's probably a better picture, though. I I, I can see uh, Big Boy. Uh, see, I, can I, I, see, I can see your magnet, your, your refrigerator. Oh, that's not a refrigerator. That's a cabinet. So... The reason why it's squealing is I'm, I'm, I'm thinning out the edge of the rim here. But this is how you back hollow it there. You can also use that, the, the round carbide tool. But I'm just going to stop there because this is going to be a demonstration piece. And we can get to finishing the outside and put the paint on it. So I'm going to switch back over to the overhead here. Uh, let's see here. Which one was a good one here? Overhead and side. Overhead. I'm looking for overhead. Shoulder overhead. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah. 
So I'm just going to clean the outside of the cup just a little bit more. It doesn't need much. But I'm just going to... Unless the sanding could get that, rid of that. So I'm just going to start work this. Working on the stem. Let's see if I got another sharper tool over here. Uh, yes. Let's try this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave like a little detail right here. It looks like the cup is sitting down inside the wood. Look. This tool is not that sharp either. Let's go back to the rougher. See how she does here. Yeah, that's better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a bead right here. rough one in and then I'll grab my detail gouge and finish it off. Nice light cuts, no hurries here. So I'm going to grab my detail gouge, my small one here. Let's see, where is it? There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. And we'll just come in here and create some round edges here. So we can go in there deep. Another cut right down into the inside there. come around this way. I know you guys want to get to the painting part, which is always the fun part. Clean this curve up a little bit. It's not exactly... Looking that all that great. Nice little OG curve into that bead. grab my parting tool I'm gonna bring this base down quite a bit here it is way too big for a piece like this I want it about the same diameter as the cup which is pretty right there pretty good Get rid of some of this waste wood. And let's see where we're at. It's going to need a little bit of sanding. Always, it's good to sand it. Okay, so that's kind of chopped up there. So I need to grab my detail gouge. 
smaller one here. And clean that up. Let's bring that almost at 90 degrees into the cut. Oop, darn. Cut that all the way. There we go. I actually hit I hit the depthness of the cut there. Okay, that's good. And just clean this part up right here. Bring that right up into there. And clean up that bead a little bit more before we get to the sandpaper part. Kind of equal it out a little bit. All right, so got that taken care of. So I'm going to grab some 180 sandpaper. Turn down the lathe some, move my tool, my tool rest out of the way. You don't want it there while you're sanding. So we're going to first touch this part. Now, if you wanted to, you know, you want to sand the inside, you can just go in. Just roll up the, the sandpaper. Just watch your fingers. And round over that lip a little bit. Make it more comfortable if you want to drink something out of this, which you probably do. And we'll just take this and take out. Oh. Now you don't need to go through all the grits when you're going to paint it. Just 180 will work. I just want to check on something here real quick. Make sure that's good and sharp. And that could probably use a little touch up right there. So I'm just going to bring this in just a little deeper here. Turn up the speed. And do a cut in. And that probably cleaned that up really well. Yep, that's what I wanted. So we'll clean this up. Gonna clean up that bead a little bit there, make it a little more round with the sandpaper. Get that sandpaper down in those grooves. And this will be where the foot is. It will cut off. And I need to get my parting tool real quick and just decide on the how thick that foot's gonna be I'm not gonna cut it off we're gonna paint it while it's still on the lathe this is just so you can know where the end is We should be all done with the sanding. We can get to the paint. This is the fun part. You guys are going to like this. So you can tell by my board here, I do a lot of painting on my lathe. <laughs> so I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to grab my, uh, my milk paint. I'm going to use white and blue today. 
So I just need to stir that up a little bit more. The blue's going to go on first. I'm going to put two layers of paint. I'm going to put the blue on and then the white over it. And then we're going to cut it back with a scotch bright on the high points of the, the piece. And you know what I need? Where is it? I need to plug in my blow dryer here so I can dry the paint quick. I can just get it out of my toolbox here. There we go. Oh, that's not going to reach. Yep, it's not going to reach. All right, I need to grab a extension cord real quick. I figured this was going to. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Let's plug it in up here. That'll work. All right. So I'm going to paint it blue first. I'm going to grab me a sponge brush. These are always handy for this. And we'll just give it a nice light coat. I don't want it to be... It's just a thin coat of blue. You don't need real thick. If you go too thick, it's going to hide. It's going to fill in these little details. And this is just the undercoat. And the white is going to be a little bit thicker. And we'll clean up the rim after we get all the painting done. Just smooth out those brush marks there. Come back over here. Fill it in. I like also about these brush, these sponge brushes is if you get too much paint down inside one of these little details, you can actually take it and get all that paint off of there and then go through and it'll absorb the extra paint. That looks like a pretty good coat. Make sure we get it all good and covered. Get some of that paint out of the brush. I have to fill in all those nice little details you worked so hard to put in there. This top one's got a, quite a bit of paint in it. Now the milk paint is, you just buy the powders, it's really easy, it's just water, so it cleans up with water, which is really nice. So now we're going to go with the white, after I blow dry it, get it all nice and dry here real quick. It dries pretty quick. It turns like a chalky blue once it's dry. So that's how you know when it's dry. As you can see that on the camera, I'm sure, the color changing. Huh? 
time is there? Uh, 1.30? Not bad. Okay, let's make sure it's dry down in those little details. You can see how much that changed color with the heat when it dried it. If you just set it aside, it would do the same thing. It would just change a different color. So now what we want to do is apply a little bit of a thicker coat. I think this is a little thicker of white over the blue. Probably have to apply a couple coats of this. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove some of the white paint off the highlights of the details and let the blue show through. And it makes it look that like the piece is a bit more worn and maybe even repainted. It's been sitting around for a while and somebody's covered. Yeah, it's going to take a couple of coats of the white. But it dries pretty quick. It's a little more runny than I thought I made it. So I need to get grab me a paper towels. Squeeze some of this paint off so I can get it out of the details here. And get some of the, some of these brush marks. Clean those up. Get rid of those runs that showed up. Now, if you have any questions, just let me know. That's what I'm. I'm here to answer what I can. Hopefully, everybody can still hear me, huh? My mic's still working? Yeah. Good. Yes, we're still here. Okay. Everybody's being so quiet. Either that's Is a that good thing because... Huh? Is that 2% either... milk paint? You know, I don't know what the percentage is. I just mix it to the thickness I want. So I'm going to put two coats of white on here. I'm going to blow, just blow this one dry. Put one more coat. So I'm like, I want it to be a bit wider than, than it is. Okay, I got a little extra paint down in there. Get rid of that. You can see it moving around when I turn the piece with the, bl the blower blowing on it. It's getting a little bit wider once it dries. And we'll see how this goes. I might add a little more powder to this water. So it's a little thicker maybe. Yeah, I'll do that really quick here. I got the powder handy. This is going to thick up the, thicken up the white real quick. Yeah, that's better. A little thicker. Just give it a really good stir. Make sure all the powder dissolves. You don't want clumps of powder getting on your piece.
All right, let's give that. Give that. I will try here. Get some of this paint off my fingers. <laughs> I meant to put latex gloves on. I forgot. Let's see how this goes on. Oh yeah, that's much better. This is what I was looking for. Yeah, the milk paint, you can. there's two companies. You can find them online that sell this. It's called the Real, Real Milk Paint Company. Uh, for the life of me, I can't try to remember what the other company's name is. But the Real, the Real Milk Paint Company has a huge variety of colors compared to the other one. The other company, you know, they, they sell basic colors and then they say to, if you want other colors, just, you know, mix different colors together to get what you want. But if you go to realmilkpaint.com, they have a huge selection of colors. Okay, so what I need to do is get another paper towel here. Get some of this paint out of the brush so I can clean it up a little bit. There's some bubbles in the paint. We don't want that. All those will go away once I use the scotch bright. But it's easier just to get rid of them now. Get rid of those. Make sure it's down in that detail a little bit. And sponge that paint out of there. A lot down here in those beads. Get rid of that. Clean those brush marks up there. And then on the, on the bead itself. And it's got a good working time. The thing with milk paint, though, it, it's only got like a six hour shelf life unless you put it in the refrigerator or freezer or something like that and then it's good for just a couple days so it's a it's a perishable paint so I'm trying to say so that's why you don't want to mix it up in really big batches There are companies that sell like, you know, pints of it and stuff in cans, but once you open that can, it's going to go bad. It doesn't keep, even in the can. Those are for if you're going to paint a whole, like, big old chair or something, then it's, it's good to buy it that way in bulk. All right. You guys still hear me? Yeah, good. So I'm going to dry this off. Yeah, thanks for the tip. Thanks for the tip on the uh, duration of milk paint. Yeah. Got some still down in that groove there. Get this all dried here. Now, you could probably go through another coat of white if you wanted, but this is going to make this thing look old here in a second. Once I get the scotch bright on it, it smooths out the paint a bit, and, and it'll make the blue and, and maybe some of the wood shot, you know, show through in the more highlighted places.
So damp in this area. You want to make sure it's good and dry before you take the Scotch Brite to it. If you don't, then you're just going to remove the wet paint and it's going to smear all over the piece. It's filling all right. Yep. See, that's, yeah, that's good and dry. So I'm going to move the paint out of the way here. You know, grab me a, oh man, need a drink. Nice scotch bright here. This is one of those white ones. It's a really, really fine, it's almost like really fine 2000 grit sandpaper type. But because it's woven, it, it won't leave a bunch of lines in the paint. So you want to just turn up the, the lathe a bit here, just a little too fast. Why should you just be skipping across it there? I like to do this at about 1500. And this, this is going to first smooth out the paint. And then on the tip here, I'm just going to let it run a little bit and let that blue start showing through. I might have to switch to some sandpaper to get that to start. You can see where it's taking some of the white paint off, but that's very little. That's smoothing the white paint out. So I'm going to get some 400 sandpaper here and just lightly touch it where I want that blue paint to show through. I like to do this on the high points because that's where it's going to wear the fastest. Looks like maybe some of the wood's starting to show through also. That's all right. Makes it even look a little more used. So you want to take some off of that bead there a little bit. The wood starts showing through here on the edges. A little more off the center of the bead. Just curl over the sandpaper a little bit and just go back and forth. You start seeing some of that blue and wood start showing through. Maybe a little bit there. A little bit more on the top here. And we'll take this scotch bright again, go over those areas. All right, so I need to get rid of that line there by sandpaper right in the center. There's some of those lines. It's a little stark right there, so I'm just going to feather that out so it's not such a sharp lines on there.
So I'm taking a little extra off here because this is where you're going to grab with your fingers. And it'll make it look like somebody's been picking it up a lot. So you want to take a little extra of that paint off to make it look like it's been worn down. Maybe a little bit more on the edges here. So you just play around with it, see how it comes off. And I stop the wave and see how she looks here. So you can tell it looks kind of old there. So I'm going to go over this area with the sandpaper real quick. Take care of some of that roughness down. And remove some of that paint. So give it a little extra worn look. So that's the milk paint part done. So I'm gonna, just going to trim up the, the rim there a little bit just to get rid of any of that paint that came over the, the lip of the rim. Use a parting tool real quick. Or I can use a, maybe I'll be better off using just a gouge here. Just bring it across. Just gentle, almost closed. Just right on the, right on that long bevel there. It's the best place to do that. And just touch it with the sandpaper. Clean that up. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to part it off and we'll be done. And just like before, you want to do an undercut underneath the the goblet here on its foot because if the wood is this make sure that you don't have a curve or if it's if it's kind of bowed outward it's going to wobble on a table and if it's flat and the wood moves it's going to do the same thing so you want to undercut that foot underneath here just a little bit Scott, i have a question yeah would uh, now be a good time to, to put a wax finish on it? I don't put, you don't need to put a finish on, on milk paint. You know, it, it's paint. Uh, it's going to stay on there like any other thing you paint. And if you put a finish on it, it's, it really darkens the color. So if you want a really dark color, then yeah, you can go ahead and but don't use an oil. I would just use like a, a some sort of a wax finish on it. I wouldn't use the I wouldn't use the friction polish because you need heat to make that work, and you would just screw up the paint doing that. Okay, thank you. But I I just leave it bare. I mean that that paint it, it's going to last forever on here. But yeah, you could put a, if I was going to finish it, I would put a wax on it. I wouldn't use oil or, or something. You might be able to get away with a spray lacquer. You can spray lacquer on it, but it's always, it's going to darken the wood somewhat when you do that. So I'm taking this down in steps again, just like I did before. Now I'm moving the. Moving the parting tool, making a groove, moving it, making a groove, moving it. It's okay, it's almost ready to come off. It, no, nope, it did come off. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to, no. Oh. 
stay on there until I was able to get my small parting tool on there, but it didn't hurt it. It's just got that, it's got a, a little bit of a nib there I got to get rid of. But there you go, that's a, I didn't finish the inside because this is a demo piece, so you can still see the drill hole in there, but that's how you would make, uh, make an antique type goblet.